Tia Stock and Berek, Momo Double Store, that's Katie Tung. Hi people, today we are in Hungary and we are making this very famous Hungarian dessert, Double Stort. This layered dessert is named after its inventor, this person, and the word Tort originates from Germany and there are many reasons why Tort is called Tort and not cake, even though it is a type of cake. But that's not over here, okay? Let's just get baking, shall we? Can we just take a moment to appreciate my new apron? Guys, I am a sucker for anything personalized. Just write my name on it and I am sold. So back to the business of today. First item on the agenda is to get my parchment papers ready. My 9 inch pan is too wide for me to get two cutouts from one sheet. So I will go for the slightly smaller one and then use a pencil to trace it out. I need about six more but I will get to that in a bit. For the tort, we need eight whole eggs separated. I'm not sure I've used this many eggs for one cake before. Some butter that will be melted shortly, flour and sugar. Look, I got a new hand mixer. This one, I shall name Philip and it is totally not because it has Philip's written on it. Let's take Philip for a ride, shall we? Well, he is quite heavy and you really start to feel the strain after some time. But he is not as lousy as the old one and he is stronger so yeah we are ripping up the egg whites until stiff peak forms with the mixer running add two tablespoons of sugar to give the meringue stability i don't remember how long this took but you will know when it is ready because it will look like this you know my brain works in reverse sometimes i somehow expect this thing to fit into this smaller bowl i don't really know how that is supposed to happen in the same bowl, you don't have to clean it, combine your egg yolks, the remaining sugar and about 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whip until it becomes thick and pale and about doubled in volume. Add your flour and gently mix it in. I don't really know why I added a little bit of the butter to the melted butter and then mixed in before pouring to the big batch but we will assume there is an important reason why. Once that is fully mixed in, we will gently fold in the meringue. meringue? I don't know how to pronounce it. I will do this in three batches and try my best to not knock the air out. You have to be really gentle at this stage. I will be using these trays to bake the layers in. Place your parchment and then scoop about half a cup of your butter in the center of the circle you have traced out with a pencil you can barely see. Get an offset spatula and spread within the circle. Kind of like painting inside the objects thing we did when we were little. First layer is done. It bakes really fast like five minutes as it is very thin. So the most you can do is go pee. Well, a maca is much better. Surprise, surprise. Remember to flip the parchment over so the side with the marking is at the bottom. If you are using edible markers, then it shouldn't be a problem. So I made the mistake of stacking the layers. I even traced out the markings on the parchment to avoid contact with the layer beneath. In my mind, I did something mind-blowing. Well, condensation happened and the layer stuck even more to the parchment. Thankfully, we did not have any fatal casualties. I have all 9 layers done or 8, I am not sure. Now we move to the frosting. More eggs, yay, and some sugar. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. This time, I want the volume to almost triple in size and I am marking the side of my bowl because I'm in business. I really like Philip, I think he is money well spent or maybe it is too early to say. Once the desired volume is reached, transfer on a pot of simmering water. From here on, we are just whisking away. First for about 10 to 15 minutes and then adding 2 tablespoons of water and whisking for an additional 10. Eggs are pasteurized at about 60 degrees internal temperature just so it is safer to eat if you decide to use them raw like I am. I have 62 degrees here and I'm going to heat it a little further because I have trust issues. And you know I am Nigerian because I am sticking my finger in to feel how hot it is. Add your chopped chocolate and stir it in. This thing has to cool completely before we can proceed so I'm going to pop it in the freezer to speed up the process. To finish up the frosting, I will begin by whipping up some room temperature butter and adding the chocolate thing a bit at a time. You know I dream of the day when I get my own stand mixer and I just have the freedom to do absolutely anything with my hands. It looks like this and tastes like this. I am happy to tell you we can now start to assemble and guys I am confused half the time. Eventually, I settled for this board because I want to be able to take it off easily when I'm done. You don't want to go too crazy with the frosting. The layers are thin, so the frosting should be commensurate. 
kind of like spreading jam or chocolate spread on bread spread on bread Ooh, it rhymes <laughs> i drew circles on my parchment and somehow i still managed to get out of the line you kind of know how art and crafts was for me as a kid or even as an adult from here on you just repeat seven more times easy peasy The hard part is waiting at least one hour because everything has to set, so a really long nap in the fridge. For the final layer, we are making hard candy or caramel, some sugar, this much water on medium to high heat, undisturbed until it turns amber, and then you pour on the last layer. You have to work really fast because this thing hardens very quickly. Grease a knife and divide the candy into it while it is still soft. The butter prevents sticking. I wasn't fast enough and I didn't cut deep enough. I put the knife on a hot stove. That way it will slightly warm the already set candy and make it possible to separate. Only that I forgot the knife was hot. <coughs> I know my scream is annoying. That is why I put it here. This part is self-explanatory. I just need to rest my mouth for a bit. A little bit of housekeeping. And some markings to help with placement. You get what I mean soon. Well, I'm not came to help because my hands and my brain and my eyes don't really work together when it is time to pipe. And now we're just trying to arrange this thing. I don't know what to call it. Caramel slices. Yeah, I think caramel slices. See what I was saying about piping. I just made something that looks like poop. The problem I will have in the future is that this girl is not going to be with me forever. So I really need to get this piping thing under control. And we are done. Now we can take a look inside. I am very happy with this one. I have so many butch desserts and it has just made me more appreciative when something goes right. So how does it taste? Well, the sugar thing, I know what it tastes like because I burned my lip when I was trying to eat it from the pot. Okay, I made nine layers total. It kind of tastes like pancakes. It doesn't feel like a regular cake. It's not spongy and airy. It doesn't just feel like cake. I was worried it was going to be really eggy, but that seems to not be the case. I mean, we used eight eggs plus three eggs for the frosting. It isn't too sweet, which I really appreciate, and I really, really like the frosting. It feels a little dense, and it is possible I may have messed something up while making the butter. I guess I will only know for sure when I go to Hungary and try it someplace. Overall, it is a nice dessert and if you are feeling a little adventurous, then you should try it out. And that is it guys, I will see you next week. Bye!